It's cold, it's dark, and it's wet. It must be time to test out some bike lights. Here at Road CC, we've been busy working our way through hundreds of bike lights, and these are the very best. Stay tuned for our favorite ways to get seen, stay safe, and to illuminate the road ahead. We'll start off with this rather cost-effective way of seriously improving your on-road visibility. Even in my relatively short cycling career, I can remember small, cheap bike lights being a <laughs> However, that's all changed. Something like this Raveman CR450 boasts impressive stats with a maximum output of 450 lumens and can be picked up for less than 40 quid if you shop about. Thanks to lights like these, there really is now no excuse for not using one. And even in decent weather, I now always try and ride with a front flasher so I have added visibility and peace of mind. Raveman CR450 is small, light and runs for as long as most of us would ever want to ride for on the lower lumen setting. It has a rather useful remote switch, which is, well, very useful to switch between modes on the go. And you can even keep using it while it charges from a battery pack if you want to extend its runtime. You get six modes with the high beam offering 450 lumens and lasting for around 100 minutes. While it's certainly not the brightest light that you can buy, for being seen, this light is well worth it and for a reasonable price. It's also just about bright enough on its high setting to see where you're going on the odd unlit shortcut. Of course, many riders don't want to let a bit of darkness stop them. And for that, you're gonna need something a little bit bigger. The ETC F1500 front light kicked out a rather predictable 1500 lumens on its brightest setting, which we found to be more than enough for the majority of our road riding. It also has plenty of features that you'd expect to only find on more expensive lights, such as an effective daytime running mode, which lasts around 30 hours, and smart mode functions, which automatically adjust the brightness to your surroundings. My surroundings are a tunnel, quite a cold, wet tunnel. It's equipped with USB-C charging and is easy to operate. The mounting bracket is simple but effective and allows fitment both on aero and round profile handlebars. There's more to a light than lumens, and that's why we put loads of bike lights through our extensive beam test. More on that in a minute. When it comes to beam shape, no front bike light impressed us more than the outbound lighting detour. The detour uses a pair of LEDs with custom reflectors to cast a wide beam with a distinct cutoff at the top, so it doesn't shine straight into the eyes of oncoming riders or drivers. Whether you care about the oncoming traffic or not, the light actually goes where you want it, so it's a win-win really. The detour has clever features like the mounting system, which nicks an idea from the world of photography, apparently. It's basically a scaled down Manfrotto RC2 quick release. That's something that's used to fit and remove cameras from tripods. It also features an adaptive mode and has the ability to run off an external battery for longer life, which adds to its appeal. Outbound lighting have got the basics right too, with quick charging from USB-C and the six modes were enough to cover pretty much any situation you might find yourself in. Before we take a look at the final three front lights that have made the cut, including the light which has won our best overall front bike light for 2024, here's a sneak peek behind the scenes of our annual light test. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then why not click the button now? So, every year we go to our top secret testing location, a dark lane just off the A367 in Kumhe, with a barrage of lights, a willing volunteer, some cones and a big camera. The idea is that with all the lights in one place, we can begin to draw comparisons between them and build a better picture about the capabilities of the lights more than their lumen outputs alone let on. The second part of the beam test is a little bit more mysterious and involves Dave disappearing into his shed for a few days and emerging with lots of useful graphs, allowing us to categorically say how wide a beam is and where the light is actually going. If you're interested in finding out a bit more about the beam test or want to compare loads of lights, then head over to the RoadCC website. We'll pop a link in the description below. Taking our overall title this year is the Giant Recon HL1800. When we tested its predecessor a few years ago, the HL1600, we didn't think it could get much better, but it has. It's now even more user-friendly and some improved features such as 200 lumen power bump, a more compact size, and some Garmin head unit integration. It's also decent value at under hundred pounds if you shop around. There are five modes which are simple to navigate and on the brightest setting, our reviewer could get almost two hours out of it. You will of course get much more on lower beam settings. But most importantly, the burn times are accurate and you're not gonna get caught out. 
Our reviewer concluded that if you're after a single unit slash compact front light that can handle the darkest of conditions and impress in practically every measure that matters, it's hard to see past the giant recon HL1800. Bam, enough said. As we said earlier, cycling tech has come on quite some way in the last few years, and one of those areas is cameras. There are some bike lights that combine illumination with footage capturing abilities, and our current favorite is the Fly 12 Sport from Aussie brand Cyclic. This latest version has an OLED display, 4K playback, and up to seven hours of battery life. It's also quite a lot lighter than the previous version, shedding about 25% of its weight to come in at just 148 grams. A 64 gigabyte micro SD card is supplied, which should capture many hours of footage before you need to buy another. And we found the footage from Cyclic cameras to be good enough for projects with higher production values, as well as just recording the commute or reporting a near miss. The beam itself has a max brightness of 400 lumens with solid pulse and flash modes, and is ideal for road cycling and commuting in all environments, and even a brief foray onto an unlit path. Like number six, money no object. I like this one. And we'll conclude with our best money no object front bike light, the Exposure Strada Mark 11 SB with Active with a K. It's definitely a lot of cash, but if you've got some dollar burning a hole in your pocket, then this is everything and more that even a pro cyclist would want in terms of light output, build quality, and tech. Offering 1600 lumens, you'll always have enough light on offer. And there's seven modes to choose from, which are easy to navigate through. The battery life is impressive for an all-in-one unit too, testing around two hours at full power to 36 hours on its lowest setting. There's also some seriously class-leading tech. Active technology, for example, enables the Strada to respond to oncoming light sources and lower its output accordingly. We've continually been impressed with how well this works, and active mode smoothly dims the output as cars get closer to you and then returns up to full brightness quickly after they passed. There is a few other lights that are worthy of a mention and scored a nine out of 10 in our reviews. The giant Recon HL350 has an RRP of 3499 and is a great B scene light. The ProViz LED360 Rigel will set you back 5499 and is a cheap way of seeing what's ahead. The Magic Shine Ray 2600 Smart Remote Bike Light packs a punch with 2600 lumens for 113 pounds and the Exposure Joystick Mark 16 and latest Sirius also score very highly and are ideal for fitting to either your helmet or bar. In fact, this is a, a Sirius. It's very good. The Raveman PR2400 USB dual lens front light is also well worth a look if you're frequenting dark lanes. Or how about this Nog Bilby, the best headlamp style front light that we've tested. Which of these lights would you pick? Or is there one that you think we need to urgently get in for review? Let us know in the comment section below. If you found this video useful or interesting, then please give us a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on more reviews, advice, and well, us pressing around on bikes. We'll see you next time. Bam.